This is a video about a shoe. Not a new shoe, not a fancy shoe. It's not going to get you any PBs, but it might just be my favourite shoe ever. And that shoe, my favourite shoe of all time so far, is the Hoka Clifton 8. So the Clifton 8, as you can see, well over a thousand kilometers later and it is looking a little bit the worse for wear. Quite a bit of the grip's gone on the bottom. <laughs> that bit's gone completely. Um, but wow, what a shoe this has been. It's been through the ringer with me on roads, on trails, through mud and rain. I've done a lot of running in this shoe. But what do you get when it is brand new? Well, it's a kind of cushioned, neutral stability shoe designed for those easy miles, the daily miles where you just want your legs to recover. You're not gonna be able to pick up and go massively fast in this shoe. It's not meant for a race day. And Hoka as a brand are famed for their comfortable shoes, kind of everyday runner shoes. The Clifton isn't their most cushioned shoe. That'd be something like the Bondi. And uh, it has a bit of a responsive toe off still. So you can see it goes up quite a bit here, which means you still get a bit of pop as you're leaving the ground. But in general, you're not gonna be going fast in this shoe. Hoka's become quite a fashionable brand recently, which is interesting. A lot of people are wearing them, whether they're runners or not. I see them in the gym quite a lot. From a pure stats perspective, for a UK size eight, this shoe will come in at about 252 grams. So not too heavy. It doesn't feel like you've got a massive thing on your foot, but it still keeps your legs protected. It has EVA foam in it, no plate or anything like that. And it will set you back at retail price, about 130 quid, but this is not the new model anymore. There's the Hoka Clifton 9. Uh, so you can find these for around 75, 80 pounds, which is part of the reason why I think it's such a good value shoe. I'm dropping mud everywhere. I'm gonna put this down. So yeah, the Hoka Clifton 9 is out, but I don't think from what I've heard on reviews, I've never tried it. Uh, there's much of an improvement to the eight. So if you wanna save yourself that extra kind of 50 quid, you might as well go with the eight. I mean. The nine's gonna be just as good, if not better, I'm sure. But yeah, check out some reviews of that maybe before you choose. It also comes in an extra wide version, which I thought was quite useful. I didn't need that personally. I feel like I've got quite wide feet and I, I didn't need the wide version. Um, but that is useful to know in case you have wide feet. I found it actually quite spacious, especially in the toe box. It's a little bit narrow in the very middle of your foot, but after a few runs, that kind of all flattened out and it was okay. The thing about this shoe is it really made me want to go out for those easy runs. I feel like any new piece of equipment or tech can help you want to go out for the just boring everyday runs. They're decently grippy. I went out in a couple of inches of snow uh, in these shoes and was absolutely fine. So that's really good. They're not too warm either. I feel like that can be a problem with easy shoes. They have a bit too thick of an upper, but actually they were fine. I ran in the summer in them loads and never had a problem. And obviously the durability has been fantastic. If that's what they look like over a thousand kilometers, then you can easily take them past the usual kind of 500 to 800 kilometer recommendation. So who do I think they're for? Well, I think they're for the everyday runner, honestly. They're decent shoes. They're not too expensive, really, for a lot of daily and easy mile shoes out there, especially if you go for the Clifton 8, not the Clifton 9. I think Hoka have a really good line of shoes, especially with their even faster ones now. They have a great variety. I think anyone that's just going out and doing park run, going for a couple of runs a week, uh, could benefit from this shoe. On the other hand, pretty serious runners can also benefit from this shoe as an easy day shoe, a recovery shoe. I did do a couple of steady and tempo runs in them, so it's not like you can't get up a little bit faster, but obviously I wouldn't do any sessions in them. I just think they're a great all round if you want one shoe to do most of your mileage in, this is gonna get the job done well and it's gonna do it for a long time. So what's next? Those shoes have run their course. I only really use them for muddy runs or maybe some gym work. They're not the most comfortable anymore after a thousand kilometers, but that's that's not their fault. That is just shoes in general and that foam compresses over time. When thinking about what shoe I was gonna get next, I really could have just bought the exact same shoe again. I was really tempted. I was thinking maybe I move to the Arahi, something like that just for a bit of difference, maybe I get the Clifton 9. But I thought, no, let's try a different brand. But what brand is that? You're gonna have to stay tuned to find out. There'll be a video out very soon about the shoe that I got next. And actually, I'm so delayed in filming this video that I've already done over 150 miles in this new shoe. So stay tuned, 
and that video will be coming very, very soon.